This is Mike Roth. Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages podcast. In this show, we're going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs, and interesting folks who live here in the villages to give perspective of what's happening here in the villages and information that I think all villagers should have. We hope to add a new episode most Fridays at 9 o'clock. We are making a change soon. All of our shows will be distributed by a single podcast syndicator, Buzzsprout, both the old shows and the new show. We are also changing our subscription plans. Now you will be a supporter by simply making a subscription, subscribing via Buzzsprout. You can make a contribution of any amount that you'd like. We'd suggest $3 a month. If that's too much for your budget, you can pay less or If you're really enjoying what we're doing and want to see us continue, you can pay more. This is going to be a subscriber-supported podcast. We are making this conversion to make it easier for everybody. And all of the subscriber-only episodes that were available on Apple Podcasts will now be converted to the Buzzsprout channel, and everyone can go ahead and listen to those. Bonus content with Ellie Decker. Uh, Ellie, you're seat on Enscott is going to supervise the new trash people. Is that it? Uh, Part of it is includes trash, yes, and that includes the fact that we are having it taken to Covanta, burned at a very extreme temperature, and it is converted to energy. Currently, Duke Energy is buying some of that, and we'd like to see Seiko and I begin to buy some of that. Um, They also, in the process, um, keep the metals that um, are kind of the byproduct after everything's said and done, and that the ferrous and non-ferrous or metallic and non-metallic mm-hmm. metals to get metals. Um, the I hear the question all the time, why aren't we recycled? And that's why to energy instead. And there were two problems. Is it with that recycling? recycling? Isn't that recycling that is, by that's itself? That's reuse and recycling. And the two reasons they um, stopped with your traditional because they're trucking it a long, long way away. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was expensive. You know, expensive, time consuming, and you're burning fuel to do that. Uh, and the other thing is uh, on the plastics, uh, they started having an issue with people in China who were recycling it. There were a couple of things going on there. And I can tell you from my experience in South Florida, uh, that the p- experts on fish are starting to find teeny tiny bit of plastic in some of them. So mm. there was a problem with dumping in that country, in that or specifically, but we, we want... have found a ton of plastic bottles in the ocean. Mm-hmm. So there's just, yeah. So so I think this method of burning cheese so far looks good. I think Where we is... need to keep an eye on the CO2. Where is the incinerator plant? Uh, it's a long ways away from here, and there's no it, well, not, not super long, but I mean, it is uh, east of here, far enough that nobody can smell it or see it or feel it or even know it's there. There's no resident area around it. Nobody is being affected by it. It's out, out in the sticks or out in the country. Not as far as where we were hauling the trash. What, Georgia? It's not as far as Georgia. So, so let, me, let me see if I understand. Someone throws in newspapers, they burn, they turn that into energy. Someone throws a, a pipe wrench in. Yeah, some of that may survive the fire and become a uh, metal. Okay. I thought they were, would be salvaging that out before it goes into the oven. You know, we're uh, supposed to get a tour of the Covana plant. If I get on NSCAD, I'll be able to that tour. Um, currently, at the last meeting this month, they said they are still under some COVID restrictions because it is, you know, everybody's trash. And so that yeah, can okay. get kind of unsanitary. Tricky. So um, once they get to where they feel, they can give everybody a safe a tour that is on the agenda. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Good. And uh, my last question about recycling. What about the, these things, batteries? Oh, batteries, my goodness. So interesting thing I have recently learned about lithium, lithium ion batteries. Uh, they are made from some rare earth materials, I yeah. believe, and Cold there lithium. are people in Africa mm-hmm. at war over those materials. Yes, we have ve- we have very limited supplies of lithium in the, in America, and, and we have a lot of environmental restrictions and complaints about people trying to expand the lithium mines. Right or wrong, I can't tell you, but it, you put it in a battery, 
and it is explosive. So also, I'd like to find some way, I hope some entrepreneur out there will figure out a way to recycle batteries instead of just letting them fill up our landfills. We're done with Well, lithium ion. And maybe Covanta might be part of that solution. I hope so, because lithium ion is an expensive material. Uh, these alkaline batteries, they're cheap, and you can throw them in a fire and they won't explode. Uh, I do. I do love my batteries. I'm <laughs> and so in Kansas we had uh, you know sirens that would were tested for tornadoes uh, during the spring every month at noon on Wednesday, the first Wednesday. Everybody knew it, and um, we don't have those here, in, um, and we also don't have basements where every home in Kansas has a basement. So what I do is I <laughs> go into when the weather is really bad or if there's a watch out. I'll go into the most interior room of the house with no windows, mm -hmm. and I um, have added keeping my bike helmet in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't we, we don't ride bikes, but we do have a room like that here. Put a bike helmet in it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's an interesting idea. Uh, we we haven't done that. It's fairly inexpensive. And a flashlight, of course. And Lots of flashlights. And I have a girlfriend lights. that was a terrible, terrible in California. She said the one thing that people don't tell you during a natural disaster that you, and that is, she said, I really need my shoes because everything's broken and there's broken glass, and, you know, nails, fire, all sorts of things. So. I lived in California for 15 years. There and you go. Earthquakes is probably the number two reason why I agreed to move to Cincinnati from L.A. Was the earthquakes? Yes. And the number one reason was? Oh, my wife's job, job got transferred to Cincinnati. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the traffic. <laughs> the traffic was number three. It was, it, uh, it, it was unbelievable the way traffic grew in that place. And for many years, they stopped building roads. And, well, they would have to displace people in neighborhoods to build more roads. And so to extend... Uh, yes, with free, use of eminent domain. Right. Mm -hmm. to extend the freeway to LAX. Right, the airport. Mm -hmm. That road took approximately 15 years the whole time I was there before it was open. Oh, my goodness. It's probably only in the last six months I was there that you could jump on the Harbor Freeway, cross over to the Century, I think they called it the Century Freeway, which actually ran on Imperial Boulevard uh, to get into LAX. Well, the I used to own half of an excavating company, and one of our problems was weather. Mm -hmm. So we had to make hay when the sun was shining. L.A. has ex or California has excellent weather, and they do have rain, of course. But it se that seems like a long time. It it was, but <laughs> there are uh, a lot of environmentalists in California, and a lot of very strange rules that, as an Easterner, I had a very mm -hmm. difficult time accepting. Well, you know, we all need clean air to breathe, and we all need clean water, to, and, and that's not a bipartisan, or that's not just a one, mm -hmm. you know, that's everybody. Everybody has to, everybody has to. I'll tell you a fast story about that. Uh, first year I'm in California, they told me there's no life east of the 405 freeway. I had to make a sales call in a town, let's call it near San Bernardino. Uh, uh, that's where I used to go. I was born in Los Angeles and moved to Kansas 9. My parents had a couple little cabins in San and that's where we would go on the weekends. Yeah, so I'm dr driving towards Riverside, and, and I get out there. I did the sales call, and I'm driving back, and my eyes were burning like they had never burned before. Smog? It was the smog. We had smog alerts in elementary school, mm -hmm. and um, they were basically no recess days. Mm. During our earthquake drills, we would go out to the farthest areas of the playground of equipment away from the baseball diamond fence. Uh, you know, then when we moved to Kansas, we had tornado drills and we went to interways. Did you actually live through any earthquakes in Los Angeles? Yes, I did. It was not a very bad one. I recall I was, I was still pretty young. We, I was with my little sister in the bathtub, mm -hmm. and the bathtub water started you know, flowing, Slush, sloshing, sloshing around yes. all those waves. And so we grabbed towels and we went outside and there, my mom was in the backyard by the pool and it was just a little fun, a lot of people, so we weren't like, you know, make a million average middle class family. And my mom was out there um, and she's watching the pool and the pool is like sloshing with big waves and, and all of that. And we were told uh, to stand in a doorway mm -hmm. during an earthquake yeah. at home. I was told that too. And mm -hmm. this earthquake hit, I'm up on the second 
the second floor of our, our house, brushing my teeth with an electric toothbrush, and it scared the heck out of me. I dropped the toothbrush. Somehow I got down the stairs without touching any of the stairs. And, and, and I remember standing outside of the house, you know, watching the tennis court move and the pool move. And I'm standing in front of a big plate glass window. Oh, no. <laughs> it didn't break. Oh, uh, that's but, good. And I walked back in and the electricity was out. And I'm hearing this buzzing. And I, <laughs> I finally got upstairs. <laughs> And there's the electric toothbrush yeah. on the floor in the middle of the next to be the bedroom. <laughs> you probably thought you were being electrocuted while I, it was buzzing when it first started, huh? I, I was afraid a water pipe had busted or a oh, gas pipe, yeah. but uh, that was the experience that said, hey, it's it's easy to leave California. You don't have to put up with earthquakes. Yeah, I think they said to us, oh, that was nothing but a tremor. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, California is something else that's it's getting awfully crowded there, and that's contributing to their their smog. And well, hopefully we don't have that here in Florida. Ellie, again, I want to thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, it easy, and good luck in the election. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. We are making a change soon. All of our shows will be distributed by a single podcast syndicator, Buzzsprout, both the old shows and the new show. We are also changing our subscription plans. Now you will be a supporter by simply making a subscription, subscribing via Buzzsprout. You can make a contribution of any amount that you'd like. We'd suggest $3 a month. If that's too much for your budget, you can pay less or if you're really enjoying what we're doing and want to see us continue, you can pay more. This is going to be a subscriber-supported podcast. We are making this conversion to make it easier for everybody. And all of the subscriber-only episodes that were available on Apple Podcasts will now be converted to the Buzzsprout channel, and everyone can go ahead and listen to those. Remember, our next episode will air live Friday at 9 a.m., or should I say pre-recorded, but that's when it will be released on our regular subscriptions. Bonus subscribers can get early access to episodes. Should you want to become a sponsor of the show, contact me at MikeRoth at RothVoice.com. If you know someone that you think should be on the show, send me an email at Mike at RothVoice.com. I want to thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyright by Roth Voice 2023, all rights reserved.